Hi guys, this is Rio for Personas, and today we're looking at how to navigate like a boss. I'm gonna teach you how you can move your playhead cursor the most efficient way to localize transients, beginnings and ends of selections and much more. Let's get started. All right, so the first navigation options that you should really know about, you're gonna access by right clicking here on the transport bar and you see that we have a couple of choices here. And let's talk about return to start on stop and loop follow selection first. So when return to start on stop is not engaged, which is the default behavior, then Studio One will kind of have like a pause behavior when you stop, meaning that it stops at your current location and it will also continue from there. It won't go back to your original starting point like this. Right, now it's stopped exactly here between bar 14 and 15 when I hit play again. It doesn't jump back to where I started. But if you right click here and you set return to start on stop, then that's exactly what happens. Right, I think you get the idea. The other one is uh, loop follow selection, which is also really cool because it allows you to just select an event. And as you can see, the loop range is set immediately according to the length of that event. So if you're working on a smaller section like this and uh, you have loop engaged, you see then you can really make all the adjustments you need to make. and can keep uh, working on it. What's great though is that um, as it's playing, selecting another event, as you can see, doesn't change the loop range because that would have, that would cause a lot of unexpected behaviors. So I think this is really, really handy depending on uh, your individual workflow. Another one you should really know about is up here and it's called cursor follows edit position. That is something that people always look for when they come from Ableton Live and similar DAWs. What this does is that your cursor, your playhead cursor will always be located to the beginning of your current event selection, just like that, you see? And that can also help tremendously. Another really handy navigation tool that you can access without any keyboard shortcuts right from Studio One is play markers. And let me show you what those do. Now play start markers you can enable by either right clicking here in the transport bar or right clicking here in the timeline. And what they do is they give you this green uh, sort of triangle shaped thing and this will cause the playhead cursor to always start from this position. So that is really great if you're, for example, editing vocals and there's always a very specific part that you need to monitor. And um, no matter where I'm going here, it will always go back to that initial location. And it's very easy to relocate it and also to toggle it off. If you're using it a lot, then you probably want to use it with a keyboard shortcut. If you're like me, then there's another thing you can do that really helps you navigate. I have a problem with my bars beginning at number one, because if I want to count eight bars, then I always have to deduct one extra. I have to go from bar one to nine, for example, instead of zero to eight, which kind of feels counterintuitive to me. Maybe that's just me. But if you're the same, then you want to go to song and song setup and just change the bar offset right here to minus one instead. And if you do that, and you can see that your song is actually starting at bar zero, which makes counting, at least for this kind of eight bar music that I do, that much easier. The last navigation option that you should know about before we have to head to the keyboard shortcuts is hidden here in the track options. And I have an entire video covering track options if you want to know what each of these does. But the one I'm referring to here is called locate when clicked in empty space. And uh, yeah, you can see very quickly what it does. Now I can just click anywhere in the timeline where there's no event and my cursor will immediately jump to that position instead of me having to go up here in the timeline and click. Sometimes you don't actually want this behavior though, which is why I prefer to have a keyboard shortcut that does precisely this instead. But we're gonna look at that in just a sec. All right, so far for all the navigation controls that you can access directly with your mouse. And now I wanna show you my five favorite keyboard shortcut sets for navigation. This is the part in the video where we're gonna talk about keyboard shortcuts. And this is also why I don't like to have cursor follows edit position and locate when clicked in empty space on by default. The key commands I'm gonna show you right now will give you full flexibility so that you don't have to have them enabled at all times because sometimes they can uh, be a little bit annoying too. 
And the two key commands I consider the most valuable for navigation are locate selection and locate selection end. We open up Studio One and keyboard shortcuts and just search for locate selection and we find both of these guys. And we can see that locate selection is assigned to key L by default, but locate selection end is not. And what I like to do is use a multi-button mouse like you can see right here and assign two of its buttons to locate selection and locate selection end. Why that's so great, I wanna show you right now. So check it out. I can just select an event and then go immediately just with two clicks to the start and end point of my selection. So that's kind of, uh, mitigating the need entirely to have this option enabled at all times because I follows edit position. And because I mostly want to navigate to events anyway, I also don't need to have the track option to locate to the empty space enabled at all times. Although we also have a key command for that. And you find that if you go to Studio on keyboard shortcuts and you search locate mouse cursor, there you go, that's a science which is rather unfortunate to command in space by default, which is not very handy since that triggers spotlight uh, on macOS. So let me just go ahead and reassign that to something else, maybe F16. Uh, I have this large numpad keyboard right here that has so many extra buttons, so why not? And just to try this out, I can just hold my mouse cursor on any position where I wanna go, trigger this hotkey, See, and that's how I can navigate the entire map. And this allows me still to click sometimes and make selections without accidentally relocating the cursor. And if I actually want to do that, I just click this extra hotkey. Now, of course, I could also make that a button on my multi-button mouse to make that even more flexible. If you're time stretching or working with audio a lot, I think you're gonna really enjoy the next key commands that I'm gonna show you. You'll find them if you search for a hotspot in the key commands, and these are specifically next and previous hotspot. Essentially, this allows you to uh, tap with the playhead cursor to the next transient or the previous transient, and if you assign those to, for example, F13 and F15, like I'm gonna do right now, then you can use the middle button, F14, to quickly insert a bend marker. So whether you have to go a step back or a step forward, you're always just one key away from inserting a bend marker for quick time stretching. This is something uh, to keep in mind when assigning hotkeys, the ergonomics. So let's go ahead and assign previous hotspot to F13, like that, not overriding the original hotkey. I really like that we have the option to do secondary key commands if we want in Studio One. And next hotkey is gonna be F15. And now we just need insert bend marker, and that is gonna be F14 in the middle as the secondary one. And now I can just go ahead and zoom into uh, my drum groove here. And if you want to learn how to do that, definitely also check out my how to zoom like a boss episode. And now I can use F15 to go to the next transient, F13 for the previous. And if I just make sure that I'm showing bent markers, it would be as easy to get started with time stretching. Another thing that I can really recommend you to do is set markers at key locations of your mix that you wanna A, B very quickly throughout your session. And for me, that would be a build one. So I just literally use the locate selection hotkey that we already assigned and hit plus. The chorus, hit plus again. The verse, hit plus again. And chorus two, because it's slightly different. And once I've done that, I can go to the key commands yet again and search for marker. And here we have the option to assign any of our markers with a key command. Now a numpad is perfect for that. And um, I would just recommend you to start assigning from marker number one upwards. So I like starting with numpad one for marker one, it's just the most intuitive. Then go with marker number two, uh, numpad two, marker number three, numpad three, marker number four, numpad four. You can also actually just click in here, double click it's a bit faster if you want to assign a lot of things at once. See how convenient that is. Uh, hit apply. And now I can just use my numpad to go to marker two, three, four, five, and very quickly AB several sections in my mix. Now I can also do that directly from the fader port here if I switch it to the marker page and then use the previous and next buttons, which is also super handy. Speaking of the fader port, it also has some killer navigation features. For example, on the scroll page, what I love to do is just use the jog wheel here to just go one bar back or forward with every movement. 
This is super useful when you want to navigate your session quickly but precisely. If you don't have a fader pod and you want to do that by hand, that's also possible, of course. Just go to the keyboard shortcuts once again and search for forward bar and assign that to a key command and do the same thing with rewind bar. And the last two commands I want to show you guys are play selected range and play from loop start. This is something that people from other DAWs are sometimes accustomed to. So that's definitely available. Let me show you how. So we just search play and here we're going to find a number of options, way more even than I'm uh, able to demo in this video. It's already way longer than I thought it would be again. And now we're just going to assign play selected range to anything you want. To me, shift and space is what I'm used to uh, from other applications. And play from loop start. I'm just going to go option and space here. Hit apply. And the way this works is if we're, say, working on a critical section here, and I just want to hear this particular part, then I can just draw in my range and by hitting shift and space, I'm really just playing back that specific range. All right. Now, if I'm working with a loop such as this, I can use my new hotkey option and space and it will immediately start playing from the beginning of that loop. So I hope you got something from this. Take care and happy holidays.